Joining me is Professor Dr. Abdul Aziz Bari, former law lecturer with uh, the International Islamic University of Malaysia and now contesting in the Sabah Burnham parliamentary seat. Uh, thank you for joining me today, Professor. Hello. Thank you. So, as a former academician, mm. what made you decide to leave the um, world of academia and move into politics? Well, as you know, I've... Uh, I've been forced to leave the academia. It's not because, it's not one of choice, but I have to leave. I had to attend the resignation uh, earlier, I mean, uh, early retirement because of my comments about the way the Sultan of Selangor exercised his powers uh, during the Damansara Utama Methodist Church uh, controversy. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, I suppose, put the university in a very difficult position and I think even though they did not tell me to leave but I think I I could tell, I could sense that um, I'm no longer required or rather wanted. Well your knowledge in the in, cost, in constitutional law mm -hmm. is uh, widely respected. Mm -hmm. How do you think that would bring, how would you use that to, um, you know, help bring about this change? In many ways, for example, in Parliament, we would like to have a, a vibrant and a meaningful Parliament, a Parliament that is controlling the government and not the other way around, a Parliament that is really, really representing the people, a Parliament that is uh, aware of uh, its function under the Constitution and so on. And of course, uh, we'd like to have a government that is uh, really a, a representative government, a responsible government, because in our system, the government is appointed, not elected like in America. So the government that is answerable and responsible to parliament in the two sides of the world. And of course, the media. We would like to have a, a, a more vibrant and independent media that can really play a role in, in assisting people, ex uh, especially in making decisions. Okay, let's go back to the parliament now. Let's say, let's say, if you are elected as a mm -hmm. member of parliament, do you feel that? And how would you define your role as an elected MP? Do you feel that the parliament will provide you with the necessary infrastructure and support to carry out your duties? Well, MPs are essentially, or actually, are lawmakers. So we would like to see more rakyat friendly or people friendly laws, and we. I think we have made uh, our stand very clear. We have, uh, uh, we are committed to making reform in the system, which include, among others, uh, repealing or abolishing laws that are, that are not people friendly or uh, suppressive and oppressive. What kind of laws? Sedition Act, uh, University Act, or some act that that, that uh, some uh, uh, act of parliament that contains powers that is probably draconian and unreasonable, like the power of religious society, the power to uh, impose restriction on public meetings uh, unnecessarily, mm. or the power to revoke license uh, on the part of the media and printers and so on. So these are some of the, to me, it's very important because these are, you know, the, the right to express uh, uh, freedom of expression, the right to uh, assemble peacefully, the right to form an association are three fundamentals of democracy. And the, 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 the sad thing about Malaysia is that uh, we impose too much restriction on this uh, basic law and basic uh, uh, rights, right. basic civil rights. Well, just going back to what you said about how law, um, MPs are essentially lawmakers, mm. but they are lawmakers in the sense of the word. Yeah. Now, the, but the role of an MP nowadays has some, has evolved into being welfare a, a customer service provider for for voters, right? Like grassroots level, you're hearing mm -hmm. uh, issues and concerns of grassroots voters. So how do you? How would you, as a first? Well, that is, I think, is quite unfortunate. Balance to, that to out, have yeah. because you know, people don't see the the MPs as lawmakers, you know, mm. and even and, and I think part of the problem because of the MPs themselves. They talk nonsense in, in Parliament, in the House. and But I I, I, I don't think it's entirely uh, unnecessary or incorrect to, 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 to say that there are welfare officers in the sense because 
in order to persuade people, in order to convince people that you can lead and you can take care of them, is that is this as a welfare aspect. But the problem now is because I think has taken over that uh, law making law making uh, uh, function, which I think uh, need to be corrected. And this is where you find that MPs can make a difference. And I think it has been in, in uh, I mean working for quite some time. As a, I mean, especially after. 2008 general election, where I mean, they are more proactive when it come to debating and uh, I mean uh, revising the laws before they they, they well we when you we come to uh, passing it I mean is the majority that will have the final say but at least during the debate during the question and answers and so on. Uh, our MPs, I think, have uh, have have made a, a big impact in Parliament, which I think has never been the case before, especially now when the ruling party Amno BN has no longer the what do you call it the two thirds majority. But do you think this is going back to the question that you know sometimes MPs have a difficult time balancing the role of being a lawmaker in Parliament and being there for the people in the constituency? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I think it's quite a legitimate question, uh, and and this is where I think we should uh, uh, provide them with assistance in the form of uh, research uh, assistant, uh, in the form of. Uh, Providing them with uh, allowance to uh, open up this uh, service center for their constituency, mm -hmm. because otherwise, then they will spend most of the time uh, going down to their constituency to look after the the, the, the needs and welfare of their constituents. Mm -hmm. So I think we got to do a lot of things uh, before we can really. Uh, uh, take them to task because otherwise if you don't provide this because at the moment I think the one major complaint that has been made by MPs is that they don't have enough to serve their constituents mm -hmm. and I think most of them are, are using their own money to 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 hire staff and so on and assist them. Okay. And, and if you are elected how are you going to change that? Well I don't know but uh, what I can say now is that I think we have got to sacrifice a lot because as of now, uh, the salary is not that good, the allowance are not that much, and of course the the other assistant uh, provided for by uh, the MPs are, are not uh, enough, okay. especially when it comes to, you know, uh, serving their constituents. Okay, so being a former academic, how, what would you do if you were elected? What would you do to, to change or to improve the tertiary education landscape? Uh, well, uh, that is quite a, a big thing to do and I don't think I have uh, the strength to do it myself and I don't think that will be in my uh, personal uh, crusade or become my personal crusade. But uh, what I can say is that we'll try to uh, bring or rather to, to give the academia the freedom and, and, and space to operate, which I think has been the, 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 the major problem uh, so far. It's not because of lack of money, it's not because of the lack of uh, personnel or you know people, but simply because of they don't have uh, the, the space uh, to, to operate uh, as, as, as true uh, academic and research institution. So you feel that just by removing the barriers, hmm. the, the freedom will allow it, that creativity and the cre critical thinking to flourish? Yeah, because I believe that the, 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 the people in general, and of course the academics in particular, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are smart, they are intelligent, and they, I believe uh, they, they, they also uh, would like to see uh, a change into the center of the world. Okay, thank you so much for speaking with me.